ever feel the call to pray in the middle of the night? Participate in the powerful Midnight Prayer Revival taking place at Evangel World Prayer Center's Prayer Chapel at 5400 Miners Lane. Praise the Lord and welcome to the Road to Victory television broadcast. I am Pastor Ray Romero and I pastor the Evangel World Prayer Center in Elizabethtown. And I'm so excited to be able to come to you and minister the word of the Lord to you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we begin uh, our study today. Father, we bless you and we thank you. And we glorify you and worship you and we thank you for this great day. Thank you for your word because we know that your word is true. And Father, I pray for our television audience today. Lord, may something be said today that lifts them, encourages them, builds them up, strengthens them, Lord God. And I thank you, Father, that your word says that signs, wonders, and miracles follow your word. And I declare today that, Father, even as your word goes out, I thank you, Lord God, that burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed, and people are being healed even as your word goes over these airwaves. Now, I take authority over the airwaves today, Father, and I thank you, Lord God, for freedom and liberty to minister your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm so excited to be able to come to you today. Uh, if you've been tuning in with us, we have been doing a study called the Eight Steps to Destiny. And if you were to follow these eight steps to destiny, I guarantee you that your destiny will be God's will for your life. If you need a miracle, if you need a breakthrough, if you need a healing, if you need a financial blessing, uh, if you need your loved ones to get saved, whatever it might be, if you were to follow the eight steps to destiny, I promise you that God will honor uh, what you're believing him for. Um, I have been doing that study for about eight weeks at Evangel in Elizabethtown. And, uh, and we just concluded that. And I'm getting ready to start a new study. Uh, but today I want to share a word with you today that I believe is really going to uh, bless you and it's going to help you and it's going to encourage you. Now, I want to take a moment here, and any time during this broadcast, you'll see a phone number come across your screen periodically through the broadcast. Uh, that number is the, the number to our church, and we have prayer partners that will be there waiting for your call, or they will be there answering other calls. And if you call and you get our answering service, I want to encourage you to leave your name, your number, and your prayer request, and somebody will contact you back shortly to be in agreement with you and to pray with you and to believe God with you. So during our broadcast, uh, if you feel like God is leading you to call, call that number on the screen, and we will believe God with you. I want to share with you today what I call a message called, In the Beginning. In the beginning, the Bible says, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, that, that word there, in the beginnings, would be in the beginning of what we would know. But I want you to understand that there was a beginning of God at some point and some time. As a matter of fact, we don't know when the beginning of God was. The Bible just plainly says that God was, is, and is still, and will ever be. And so we don't know when his beginning is or when his ending is. We just know that he, forever he lives and forever he is. But we, I want you to understand that in the beginning there was a kingdom that God created. And that kingdom is a place where God has established for us to live. 
it's not just the earthly realm, but it's a way of living that God has established for us. It's a method that God has established for us. Not just a place, but there is a, 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 a way that God uh, wants us to live a way that God wants us to operate a way that God wants us to function and so I call this message in the beginning but I really want you to know that we're going to be talking about the kingdom of God see there there's a kingdom of God that comes that abides on the inside of us the kingdom of God when we get born again and we get saved the kingdom of God comes and lives inside of us you see in order for there to be a kingdom there has to be a king Jesus Christ the Bible says is Lord of Lords and King of Kings so when you get born again when I was born again Jesus Christ came to live on the inside of me and he established his kingdom on the inside of me but along with that, he also wants us to establish his kingdom here on earth. The Bible says when his disciples came and said, teach us to pray, Lord. He said, pray this way. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So there's a kingdom that God wants us to establish here on earth. It's a method and a way of doing things. It's not necessarily a place. Heaven is a place. One day heaven will be here on earth. But for until then, we're to establish his kingdom. So again, I, I, I want us to understand, I call this message in the beginning because, see, God had already established his kingdom in the beginning. He established a method, a way of doing things in the beginning. He had already established this. Then we come along and he comes and lives on the inside of us. And once he comes to live on the inside of us, now he wants us to establish his kingdom here on earth. Let me read a scripture to you, and it's found in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, in verse 1. And it says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So here we see that John was already preaching about a kingdom. He's saying, repent. Turn away from the way that you're doing things. As a matter of fact, that word repent does not mean just to turn away and to go in another direction. That word repent means to change the way that we're thinking, to change the way that we're living, to change the way that we are, to completely turn away from the old man and turn to the new man. Well, how does that happen? That happens because of God's kingdom that comes and lives on the inside of us. You see, you might find yourself today talking differently acting differently, doing different things. You're not doing the, the things that you used to do or you're not doing it the same way. You're not talking the same way. You're not thinking the same way. As a matter of fact, you're not the same person that you used to be. Why is that? That's because the kingdom of God along with the king came and uh, abides on the inside of us. He lives on the inside of us. So he set up his kingdom. And if there's a kingdom, then there's a way of doing things. As a matter of fact, we could even go to the point to say it's a governmental system in which God is in charge of and God calls the shots. God says this is the way that it's going to be and that's the way we live and that's the way we operate. We cannot abide in a kingdom and not live according to the rules and the regulations that is established by that kingdom. And so you find yourself acting, talking, living, and doing things differently than you used to and that's because there has been a kingdom that has been released on the inside of you and so what what we want to establish today we want to establish the kingdom of God here on the earth 
In other words, we want to establish the way that God does things. He doesn't do them the way that we think he should or the way that we think it should be done. God does them his way. We don't operate according to the world's standards and the way the world does things. We operate under a new kingdom, a way and a method and a government that God has established for us to live and to operate in. Let's look at another scripture. Let's go uh, one chapter over in Matthew chapter 4 and in verse 23. And let's see what this scripture says, Matthew 4, 23. And it says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases amongst the people. So we see here that John says the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, if the kingdom of God is at hand and the king is Jesus, now Jesus must establish his kingdom. So here he says in Matthew 4, he says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news of the kingdom. Didn't say he was preaching the good news of the gospel. He says he was preaching the good news of the kingdom. In other words, he was teaching and preaching God's method of doing things or the way things should be done. As a matter of fact, uh, the gospel within itself just means good news. So guess what? Good news has arrived, and that's God's method of doing things. It's God's way of doing things. I can say this with 100% assurity that in the economy and in the world system that we're living in today it's full of turmoil it's full of crisis uh, it's poverty there's lack going on there's a deficit that's taking place and people are stressed and people are worried and people are in fear because they don't know what tomorrow holds they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow they don't know if their jobs are going to shut down they don't know uh, where they're going to live they don't know what they're going to eat they don't know what they're going to do but I'm telling you that's only because they're living and operating in the world's system and not in God's system. You see, there's a world system or there's a world kingdom and then there's God's kingdom. There's actually even a third kingdom and that's the demonic kingdom. Now, Satan's kingdom has a great influence in the world kingdom and the way that things are operating today. But God's kingdom operates above that. God's kingdom does not look at the world system and is, is judged or, or acts according to the world system. As a matter of fact, if we learn to operate and to live in God's kingdom, in his method, in his way of doing things, this world system should not even influence us at all. We should be living above it. We should be living according to the means that God has already provided for us, not what the world is saying, that we're going to be in poverty and we're going to be in lack and we're not going to be able to make it and we're not going to succeed and, 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 and the world system is going to crumble. I'm here to tell you, saints of God, the world system can crumble, the world system can fall, the economic system can go down, but if you're living according to God's kingdom, in God's kingdom, and God's method, that in his way of doing things, we're not subject to the world's kingdom. We're not subject to Satan's kingdom, but we are subject to God's kingdom and the way that God operates and the way that he does things. God might have us do some things or might have you do some things that don't even seem right according to your mind. But I'm telling you, if you obey the voice of the Lord and obey his word, you will see that you will become successful and prosperous. And he said here, he said, And Jesus went about all of Galilee teaching in their synagogues, teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So he was teaching and he was preaching. You see, there's a time when preaching takes place and there's a time when teaching takes place. See, teaching 
gives you a method on how to accomplish something. Preaching inspires you or motivates you to get out there and do it. You have to have preaching and teaching in accordance with the Word of God. Not just one, but there has to be a combination of both of them. Preaching and teaching. Because we need instruction. We need the taught word on how to get out there and accomplish things. But then we also need the preached word which motivates us. Gives us enthusiasm. Gives us excitement. And, 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 and causes us to get out there and do something. See saints of God, I'm talking to you today. That some of you listening to me today are troubled, you're in turmoil, you're worried, you're fear, you're in stress about what the economy is saying and what the economy is doing right now. What the news, see the news only tells you what the news wants you to hear. But I'm here to tell you, if you get into the Word of God, if you get into the kingdom of God and you allow the kingdom of God to come into your life and you begin to learn how to operate and you begin to learn how to do things according to God's word, you don't have to worry about what is going on in the world system. You just have to be assured that God is going to take care of you and God's going to provide for you and God is going to meet your every need. As a matter of fact, over and above. In the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 10, the Bible says the devil comes to, ski, to, to, excuse me, to steal, kill, and destroy. But God came that you might have life and have that more abundantly. The life, the overflowing life, the more than enough type of life. Not lack, not poverty, not I can barely make it. Not that I'm not going to accomplish anything in life. Not what my parents have said or my grandparents or our family members have said where they have said you're never going to make it you're never going to accomplish anything in life no not that but according to God's word God's word says that I am able to do all things through Christ nothing is impossible into, unto them that believe I can lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover see the Bible tells us that we can do things that the world says that we cannot do. So I want to encourage you today. See, I'm talking about in the beginning. In the beginning, God had already established his kingdom. And again, see, we only see it from in the beginning of Genesis chapter 1. But understand, in Genesis chapter 1, when God spoke that into existence, I want you to understand that that was already done. It was already accomplished. Everything was already set before God even spoke it. When he spoke it is when it happened, but it was already completed. God's plan was already in place and ready. You, the Bible says, you were predestined before the foundations of the earth. That means that before God spoke it, you had already had a destiny. A destiny to be successful. A destiny to be prosperous. A destiny to be healed. A destiny to be saved. God had already purposed in you a destiny before before he even spoke it into existence, before the worlds were formed, before the foundation of this world was even set. God had already done it. God had already accomplished it. And it was already set in place. Amen. Now, saints of God, y'all are watching by television. Uh, this is the Road to Victory television broadcast. I want you to know that we don't call it the Road to Victory just to give it a, a good name or a good title. We call it the road to victory because God has already given us the victory. God has already told us that we are going to be more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. So I want you to know today, as I'm speaking to you today and you're listening to me, I want you to know that God has a great plan for you. God wants you to be successful. God wants you to accomplish great things. Now you might say, well, Pastor, I hear what you're saying, and, and I don't fully understand everything. Well, I understand that you don't, because you're only catching me for maybe 20, 25 to 27 minutes, and you're only getting part of what I'm saying. Uh, but I want you to, to be assured that you're able to call us on that number on your screen, 
and we will be in agreement with you and we will pray with you and we will believe God with you. If you need a copy of this message, we'll be glad to send you a copy of this message as well. All you have to do is leave your name and number and your uh, phone number or your address and we will get back with you. And all you have to do is order a copy of this message and we will get it to you. Let's go on here in the Word. Let's go to the next scripture and uh, in Matthew chapter 6. Let's jump over. Now I want to share with you that real quick. We're talking about the kingdom of God. And God's kingdom was already established in the beginning before anything had already be, been done. God's kingdom had already been established. You can read in the New Testament 137 times that the kingdom of God is mentioned in Scripture. 137 times. That means that if it is mentioned 137 times, then the Lord was trying to get something over to us. Amen. Now, I, I want to go back just for a minute before I get to this next scripture, and I want to share the, the, this with you. I mentioned that there are three kingdoms that are operating right now. One is the devil's kingdom, one is this world's kingdom, and two is God's kingdom. This world kingdom is where we live. This world's kingdom is the one that governs all our rules and regulations. This world kingdom is the one that, that dictates what the Dow Jones or the NASDAQ is going to be and how stocks are rising and falling and what's going on in the world system today. And, and, but I want you to know that it's deeply influenced by the devil's kingdom. And there is a distinct battle going on between the devil's kingdom and God's kingdom. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that the kingdom of God suffereth violent, but the violent taketh by force. Another translation says that the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing at all times. So it's one kingdom that is in opposition against the other kingdom. As a matter of fact, the scripture also said uh, when Jesus cast out some devils, that the Pharisees came and said that he did that by the power of Beelzebub. And Jesus' response to them was this. He said, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. In other words, he was saying, that if I am opposing Satan's kingdom and I'm from Satan's kingdom, then it will not be able to stand. So here we see that Jesus directly uh, uh, mentioned another kingdom, and that was Satan's kingdom. So you have Satan's kingdom and you got God's kingdom, and they are in opposition to one another. Now, I'm going to tell you this, that Satan's kingdom has no power over God's kingdom. God's kingdom is far greater than anything that the devil can ever do. The problem is, is that we don't fully understand how to operate in God's kingdom. And so here we see in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, and the scripture says this, and it says, your kingdom come. Well, this is when the disciples asked Jesus, how do we pray? And he says, he says, in this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So here we see that there's a kingdom of God which is in heaven and then he said pray that his kingdom will come here on earth well that's us saints of God that's us we are establishing God's kingdom in other words we're establishing God's method and his way of doing things his method and his way of doing things so we see that there is a direct opposition from Satan's kingdom against God's kingdom. But I'm here to tell you, praise the Lord, God's kingdom is far greater, 
far greater than Satan's kingdom. We have the victory. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that Jesus has already given us the victory. Jesus has already triumphed over all the enemy. So praise the Lord. We're on the winning side. We're on the winning team. We're in God's kingdom. And we operate, we live, we function, and we do things according to God's kingdom and the way that he does things. Let's go to one more scripture. I'm going to have to close here in just a few minutes. Matthew 6 and verse 33. And it says this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now there's a whole line of teaching that can go here because what Jesus was saying, he was telling them, don't worry about what you're going to eat, don't worry about what you're going to wear, don't worry about those things. And he comes to them and he says, but seek ye first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Well, God's kingdom and his righteousness, what it's saying is seeking God in the way that he's doing things and the right way of doing things according to God's word. So saints of God, I want to encourage you today. Do things the way that God wants you to do things. You say, well, pastor, how do I do that? Well, I'm here to tell you, you do that by getting into his word. You do that by studying his word. You do that by meditating in his word. You begin to find the promises of God that outline your very need or outline what you're struggling with or what your problem is. You begin to get into his word. You begin to apply his word. You begin to declare his word, speak his word, confess his word. You begin to stand on his word. Don't let go of his word. You say, well, pastor, I've been standing. Well, stand longer. You say, well, how much longer must I stand? Well, you stand until you get the breakthrough, until you get the promise. You continue to stand, saints of God. I'm here to tell you, don't wait. So sometimes we get to the mode, we say, well, I'm tired and I just want to rest. No, this ain't the time to be tired and this is not the time to rest. When we get to heaven, we'll have all that opportunity to rest when we get to heaven. But right now, I'm telling you, there are things that are going on that we need God's kingdom to come into our lives. There are people that we know that we need to release God's kingdom into their lives to help them, to bless them, to, to allow them to, to live the life that God wants them to be. I'm here to tell you, it's not about sickness, it's not about disease, it's not about poverty, it's not about being lost, because God's kingdom covers all those things. What's happening is that we don't have people out there that are ministering God's kingdom, God's way of doing things, and what he has called us to do. Saints of God, I have to get ready to close. I pray that something that we said today has really ministered life to you, has really shared something into your, in, in, into your very being. Again, I'm Pastor Ray Romero of Evangel World Prayer Center in Elizabethtown. If you're watching this broadcast and you don't have a church home, I want to invite you to come and visit us. We are in 109 South Mulberry, right downtown in the heart of Elizabethtown. Come and visit us. If you need directions, call the number on your screen. If you're looking for a church home, if you're looking for a pastor, if you're looking for somebody that will minister the word of the Lord to you, that will teach you how to walk in what God's called you to do, I'm here to tell you we will do that at Evangel World Prayer Center in Elizabethtown. Come and visit us. Call us. Call our prayer line. Our prayer partners are standing by waiting for you. The title of this message is, In the Beginning, God Had Already Established His Kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And again, we want to thank you for joining in with us today. And, uh, and we bless you and we, and we thank you once again. And we'll see you next time in Jesus' name. Amen.
you ever feel the call to pray in the middle of the night? Participate in the powerful Midnight Prayer Revival taking place at Evangel World Prayer Center's Prayer Chapel at 5400 Miners Lane.